Oh yeah, hey. Domination. Capture the objectives. Hello guys and gals of the YouTube world. This is your man here with a plan. Endorphin Rush 23. And I got a nice chunk of nicotine going right in my body right now, so this should be this should be real nice. Uh, let me give you a, a couple directions here before you embark on this wondrous and superior journey of gameplay commentary with me. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and get your favorite chair in your house. Uh, put it by your computer. Get your favorite ice cold beverage. Uh, <laughs> If you're under 21, don't let it be an alcoholic beverage. That's against the law. And just sit back and enjoy the show here. Enjoy this epic gameplay. I thought this gameplay was pretty darn good. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go as far to say it's probably my best. Uh, get a real nice score at the end. I won't spoil it. I don't, don't, <laughs> don't like to spoil things. And I play the objective like a freaking madman. So. I thought this was definitely worth posting. And I'm using something different to record here, uh, my gameplay. Usually I use the Dazzle, which is a... Most people have heard of it and know about it and know what it's capable of. But I was getting kind of tired of playing my HDTV in standard definition when I wanted to record gameplay. But the problem was, I have a real bad computer, and I wasn't able to. I wouldn't been able to record with an HD PVR or anything because uh, my computer would not be able to play back the file or render it or edit it or anything. So, I picked up something on the market called the Blitzbox HD, which is kind of a unique little unit. It lets you play in high definition and record in standard definition. At the time of this video, I'm actually going to send the unit back, not because it's bad or anything, but something personal has happened in my personal life, and it, w it wasn't a good thing, but I got kind of fortunate out of it, and uh, it's given me some, some funds to get a computer and to get a PVR as well, so I'm real excited about that. But back to the Blitzbox, this is kind of my little review on it. Uh, as I said, you know, I don't know the quality of the video, but I'm going to give you the review on the setup and that kind of jazz. It's real easy to set up, and it actually did not take long to get to the house either. I've read reviews about it, and one of the complaints was it took a long time for the unit to get to him, like months. It actually took months. I think mine only took like a few weeks to get to my house, so I got no complaints there. Uh, the unit came with everything I needed, the drivers and everything and the program to record with, so don't have any complaints with that either. And it's real it was real easy to set up. I mean it, it was just uh just pretty darn simple and I like to keep things Yeah, you know, the simpler the better with me. <laughs> but so I would recommend it to any Possibly someone watching this that wants to get into commentaries and they have an HD TV and they like to play in HD but don't have like a super awesome computer to record and edit the videos in HD as well. So I'd recommend it to maybe some a new guy that's trying to get into commentaries or someone that just wants to try something, you know, that lets you play in HD, so Anyways, uh, this is a little ground war domination gameplay on Storm. And I'm going to do something here. I'm going to talk about the guns I'm using in this game. Not just, I'm not just going to say, like, oh, I'm using the P90 and stuff. I'm going to give a little background info. I did some research on these guns because I knew this was a long gameplay. And I wanted to, you know, make, make it pretty interesting. So I did a little research on the weapons I was using. Now I'm going to go ahead and 
tell you guys about that. I got them written down, so if it sounds like I'm reading, um, I actually am reading something, so hopefully you guys will forgive me for that. But First, let's start with my primary. I'm using the P90, and I've got the silencer on here. But the P90 is actually a Belgium-made gun. Ooh, nice C4. Uh, it's named after the year 1990, which was the year it was introduced. Uh, it was de it's designed as a compact firearm, hence it's in the submachine gun category. And it used a lot by special forces and counterterrorism units around the world. As you can see from the game as well, uh, it's very futuristic looking. It's got it's pretty unique. It's got a lot of unique characteristics as well. As you load and unload the gun from up top instead of below like most firearms. It also fires a real small caliber unit of ammunition which makes it fairly unique. And it's in the service at the present moment. It's in the service with military and pr police forces in over 40 countries throughout the world. Turn my page here. <laughs> Got it written down. And the, my, let me talk about the secondary I'm using, which is the striker shotgun. Uh, by the way, uh, this is a real good gun to use. I, I'm surprised at how good it was. I, in all my previous hours of playing this game, I never really gave the striker too much of a chance, and I kind of regret that because it's real. It's pretty darn good. It's kind of like similar to the Spaz in range and and damage as well, but it's semi-automatic too. And I I put a silencer on here, and I wouldn't recommend that. But it was fun to run around with the silenced SMG and a silenced uh, striker flanking the enemies and stuff. And, you know, being a little sneaky guy. But the the striker, it's also called the street sweeper in real life. It uses 12 gauge shotgun shells. It's a South African made gun and it was converted into the US. The US adapt, uh, adopted it as well. As designed in the early 1980s. The big advantage with the striker is that it has a, a really large magazine capacity TWSS <laughs> and uh, but however this is kind of a disadvantage with the gun is too because this makes the gun real bulky and heavy and probably I don't I've never used a striker in real life but I imagine it's pretty heavy too I didn't I didn't get the weight I didn't write it down and it's real slow to reload but also another negative is it can be dangerous to the guy shooting it because as you're shooting semi-automatic it sometimes a shell it'll pass over one of the shells and so there'll be an, a, car, a shell in there that hasn't been fired and it can actually uh, come back and explode on the person firing it so that, that would not be good I don't that's not too common but it's a possibility with the gun so if you're thinking about picking this gun up, uh, be wary of that. Which they actually do. They make a civilian version of this. It's just got a shorter barrel on it. And then uh, let me talk about the C4 a little bit. I, I like using C4 in the game. It's pretty fun to use. And so I wanted to read up a little bit about it. Uh, it's made up of explosives and plastic binder and uh, something called a plasticizer. Which puts it all together. Major, the major advantage of C4 is that it's real pliable and can be molded into like any shape that you want to. This makes it so you can put C4 charges like in holes, like small holes and gaps and cracks, and you just put it pretty much anywhere. I mean, it's like Play-Doh, really. Uh, another thing is it's very stable and real insensitive to most physical shocks. You can actually can't shoot it with a gun uh, to make it explode. The only way that it'll detonate is by a combo of extreme heat and a shock wave. And uh, something interesting else is that it was used in Vietnam to actually heat rations. The soldiers would heat rations on long patrols. But okay, guys, that's a little gun history for you. And we're wrapping up the video here. Thanks for watching. And there's my score. I go 76 and 12. My, 
high a score and uh, got a lot of captures and defends there so pretty good game alright guys thanks again